Bangladesh is a small country in Southeast Asia bordering East India. Its people have a unique mix of culture and religion. 90% speak Bangla, a Hindu language, and follow Muslim religion. This synthesis of polarizing worlds has led Bangladeshis to chart their own path. Bangladesh was part of Hindu-majority India, but in 1947 it was partitioned from India on the basis of religion. It became part of Pakistan, the Muslim-majority country, and was called East Pakistan. But East and West Pakistan did not mesh well together. The government was in West Pakistan, separated from East Pakistan by over 1,000 miles of India. Moreover, they had different ideas about politics, culture, and spoke different languages. By 1971, the Bengalis were convinced that West Pakistan was deliberately suppressing their ambitions. This resulted in the Bangladesh Liberation War, tragically costing many lives. In the end, the Bengalis triumphed and formed their own secular country, Bangladesh. The West Pakistanis considered the East Pakistanis as inferior because of their dark skin and short stature. Pakistani General Niazi said, It Bengal was a low-lying land of low-lying people. The East Pakistanis' practices had Hindu influences. Like in the Bengali New Year, images of gods and goddesses are paraded through the streets. This made them less Muslim in the eyes of the West Pakistanis. Even the language of the East Pakistanis, Bengali, originated from Sanskrit, a Hindu language, whereas the West Pakistanis language, Urdu, originated from Arabic. The superior attitude of the West Pakistanis led them to force their ideas on the Eastern Pakistanis, and in 1948, Urdu was made the national language of East and West Pakistan. Language of Pakistan is going to be Urdu and no other language. And anyone who tries to mislead you is really the enemy of Pakistan. The language barrier made it harder for the East Pakistanis to participate. In 1958, there were only 108 Bengalis in the administration, as compared to the 835 West Pakistanis. In the military, the numbers were very similar. The strong central government with few Bengali representatives had its economic policies tilted in favor of West Pakistan. The trade surplus of East Pakistan was used by the government to fund industrial growth of the West, which had huge trade deficits. By 1970, the per capita income gap between the East and the West increased to 61%. Then, to make matters worse, on the 12th of November 1970, the deadly cyclone Pola hit East Pakistan, killing at least 300,000 people. Archer Blood said it was almost as if they, West Pakistan, didn't care. Sheikh Mujibur Rahman said, West Pakistan has a bumper wheat crop, but the first shipment of food grain to reach us is from abroad. The hopelessness of the East Pakistanis peaked in 1970 when East Pakistani parties, even after winning the majority of 167 seats out of 313 in the Pakistan National Assembly, were not allowed to form the government. As Hassan Zahir, West Pakistani bureaucrat, said, the West Pakistan dominating ruling class never tried to understand the Bengali point of view. In the Liberation War of Bangladesh that followed in 1971, 100,000 to 3 million people were killed. It started in March when the Bengali struck out against the Bihadis, a Muslim minority living in East Pakistan that supported West Pakistan. Shushmita Kosh, a Hindu survivor of the Bangladesh Liberation War, remembers the Muslim dye maker that gave her dyes to play with, being slaughtered in front of her house. We had a Bihari wrong bikri kurten, and a nam chilo joljala khan. So, who bacha de balovasten, and Amadeke, Kalar Jone wrong detene, body da, puli, yehue chamish, tin din ketebarini. In retaliation, the Pakistani army was ordered by Yahya Khan to kill three million of the Bengalis, and the rest will eat out of our hands. The common person was attacked in fear of retaliation. Anthony Mascarenas recalled, Abdul Badi had run out of luck. He had made the fatal mistake of running within sight of a Pakistani army patrol. He was a slight man surrounded by soldiers. He was about to be shot. Bengali intellectuals were targeted as they were the possible future leaders of the new country. According to Sharmila Bose, Professor Jyotinwai Guhathakurta of Dhaka University was taken out of his flat or apartment 
and shot in cold blood by a Pakistani army officer. He died of his injuries four days later. By the end of the war, 1,200 intellectuals were executed. It is believed that 200,000 to 400,000 women were raped in the war. Many girls and women were forced into sex camps. This is Rushanara, 14 years old and seven months pregnant. There were nights when as many as 30 soldiers forced themselves on her. Bangladesh Shadin Holo Shabmira Bedi Elo Art Noi Bochurtike Monik Boishko Lokobdi. Shawai mentally disturbed. Chile de Clear Clock Start with Jajoke Palatahabi Palatahabi. The Pakistani army targeted the Hindu minority in particular. Scott Butcher remembered you heard stories of men having to pull down their lungis, a kind of sarong worn by Bengalis. If they were circumcised, they were let go. If they were not, they were killed. 8 to 10 million refugees, mostly Hindus, escaped to India. Shushmita Ghosh, a Hindu survivor, remembers the Muslim bullet cart owner that lied to the army and saved her life. I was in the night of the night, and I was in the night of the night. I was in the night of the night, and I was in the night of the night. I was in the night of the night, and I was in the এই যে আমাদের দুজনকে যে বাঁচালো এই লোকটাও তো একটা মুসলমান লোক মানে আমাদের ধর তো ইন্ডিয়াস ইকোনমি ওয়াজ অলরেডি ওভারবারডেন সো দে ডিসাইডেড টু হেল্প দ্য বেঙ্গলিস ফর্ম देयर ওন কান্ট্রি বাংলাদেশ এন্ডিং দ্য ওয়ার অন ডিসেম্বর 16th 1971 দ্য অ্যাট্রসিটিস দ্য বেঙ্গলিস সাফারড ইন 1971 হ্যাজেন্ট বিন ওয়েস্টেড Today, Bangladesh is a thriving country with a GDP growth rate of 7.3%, overtaking Pakistan's, and an increasing per capita income that is predicted to overtake Pakistan's as well in 2021. The Bangladeshi government, along with the NGOs who invested in the Bangladeshi women, are seeing tremendous returns. These women are the core workers of Bangladesh's garment industry, which produces 80% of its exports. বাংলাদেশে যতবারই যাচ্ছি ততবারই দেখছি যে পুরো সর্বত্র মেয়েরা ভীষণ ভাবে ছড়িয়ে আছে The number of school graduates has increased year after year The infant mortality rate has reduced and so has the number of children per family reducing the explosive population growth unlike Pakistan The policy of microfinance where loans are readily available for ordinary people has helped them in their journey to economic self-sufficiency especially women and their families. Mohammed Yunus, a Bangladeshi native who first implemented microfinance in Bangladesh, has been recognized with the Nobel Peace Prize. I bank I Bangladesh She borrowed another 60 from a microfinancing company and bought 300 chickens. Now she earns several thousand chickens as well as cattle and has recently taken out a new loan of $24,000. Bangladesh's government isn't perfect, but the spirit of democracy within the people keeps it in check. The garment factory workers are demanding tougher safety regulations and higher wages. It is this spirit which will curb the autocratic tendencies of the Bangladeshi government. Bangladeshis have friendly relationships with their neighbors instead of huge defense budgets like India and Pakistan. Bangladesh has accepted Rohingya refugees from Myanmar with the help of UNICEF, in spite of limited resources. It has contributed immensely in the United Nations peacekeeping missions all over the world. The world has also recognized Bangladesh's fight. UNESCO has designated the 21st of February as International Mother Language Day. That was the same day in 1952 that the Bengalis first rose up against the degradation by the West Pakistanis for speaking the pagan Bengali language rather than Urdu. Bengali New Year, where Muslims and non-Muslims join hands in Bangladesh to celebrate, is considered an intangible heritage of humanity. It is this triumph of secularism that has lifted Bangladesh out of the tragic religious ideology into universal humanitarian future. Shushmita Ghosh is now responsible for an interfaith ashram in Pittsburgh, which was inspired by other ashrams in Bangladesh. Ramkrishna Mission Hoche Nilopet Kwata Jaiga. Jay Jay Dharmukurche Shay Shay Halo Aki Jaiga Amra Jatsa.